Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Today I am going to be showing you how to make some awesome high-end home decor out of Dollar General and Dollar Tree plastic ware. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. So I found these bowls at the Dollar General for a dollar. They do sell bowls like this at the Dollar Tree. And that big bowl is from the Dollar Tree. Most of you who shop at the Dollar Tree probably recognize it. I also used it as a lampshade in my solar hack video. And all I did was take E6000 and some hot glue and I glued the two together like this. So make sure your glue gun is on low setting because sometimes it can melt the plastic, but that's what you should have. And then I took it outside, I sprayed it down with this Rust-Oleum Flat White Primer. It bonds to plastic. I'm gonna show you two colors here, but I really only used the Elephant Gray. I ended up going with the Antique Wax instead. And then I used the color Plaster from Waverly and some baking soda. So we're pouring the plaster in there. I am going to add water, but I do it with a squirt bottle so I can go really Really slowly because you can always add more water in you can't take it out so I just want to make sure that I didn't make it too watery because the consistency should be like a thick pancake batter when you're all done for those of you wondering why I added water it's because it makes it go a lot farther and I know I wanted to layer this to build it up so you could always use spackling from the Dollar Tree if you wanted to do this but if you have baking soda on hand you're good to go so I started with a brush, and as you can see, I'm tapping it on. I didn't like that. And then I did a sponge, and I didn't really care for that either. That ends up being great for the next process, but not for the initial coat. I went with a, I think it's called a Doppler sponge, like it's for stencils. I went with this one. This one was the easiest to work with, and what I did is I painted it on first, and then kind of you know, up and down, tap, tap, tap. And that was what it looked like with one coat. Then that dried. So now we're on our second coat and I'm gonna lift it up so you can see where you're at with the second coat. See, we're starting to get the look of stucco, but I wanted it a little bit thicker than that. So I go for a third coat. So this is still a second coat. I'm just showing you more of it so you can see, because some people may want to stop there. Now, while you're doing this, it is normal for the baking soda to ball up into a little ball of powder as you're working, and you just do a little circle like I did, a little swirl, and then spread it out and tap, tap again, and it goes away and it's all good. So for under the rim there, it got clumped up a little bit under the rim of this bowl. I end up taking a paintbrush dipped in water, and I just go along the edge, just smooth it underneath the rim, and it works perfect for that. So now we are finishing up our third coat. I didn't make you watch all that. This is the third coat and the very last thing I did was the bottom of the bowl. And when it's dry right now, I'm holding it up so you can see the result. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going closer and you'll see it even better when I paint it. It's absolutely beautiful and it's perfect for the next thing we're going to do. So I grabbed the elephant gray. Oh, I wanted to show you. I did end up doing the under part too. I don't know why, just last, you don't have to do that, no one's ever gonna see it, but I really loved the way this looked and I didn't want anyone to know it was plastic, so I went for the under part. So I grabbed the elephant gray and I end up putting it on with a Doppler and honestly, I thought I ruined it. I really did, I was like, oh my gosh, you have to be kidding me, I just did all this work. But I discovered if you have that spray bottle of water, you can fix anything because the baking soda is on there so strong. It is like cement when it dries. <laughs> so you'll see me do it here with the squirt bottle. I just tap on. Now I, I was telling you how the sponge worked better. For this part, the sponge worked better. And you're just tapping it on. Spray a little bit of water. Smear it a little bit. Just so, just in areas so you like what it looks like. And then you leave some of it alone and see how you're starting to get that look right there. That's exactly what you want. So you just have to keep playing with it. Have fun. Don't panic. You just have to, you know, if you do make a mistake, you really can't squirt it off and don't do too much. If you do too much, you will kind of melt the baking soda, but you can definitely be generous with the water for sure and make corrections. So now I moved on to the antique wax. The antique wax had a little bit of water in it, which made it super easy to work with. And I'm just tap, tap, tapping, smearing, tapping, smearing. You can see what I'm doing. It was so tempting just to show you the finished result, but you know, that used to really throw me for a loop when I would watch other creators. I really needed to see things sped up just so I kind of had an idea what they're doing. By the way, you can slow videos down 
on YouTube, there's a little icon there and you can control the speed. So if you want to slow me down or you want to speed me up, I watch tons of videos in actually the fastest speed possible because I like things fast. <laughs> Either way, whatever works for you, it's good to know that feature is on YouTube. So here I am slapping on some white paint. It's not a super bright white, but a white would certainly work for this part. I just wanted to make it look aged and distressed. So we're making a aged vessel. That's what we're doing. I googled it, got some photos. They're really hot. They have been, they've been hot for a year now. But everybody's gone to the thrift store and bought big vases to do this. And thrift store vases are not cheap. If you watch those videos, they're spending like $14 to $20 for those vases. And I want to show you how you can make it for a lot less. So we have a $1.25 Dollar Tree bowl on top. Those bowls at the bottom that I got from Dollar General were a dollar four for a dollar. So that's 25 cents. So a dollar fifty and some baking soda and cheap apple barrel paint. And boom, you have an absolutely stunning decor piece. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. So here is the round tray and the two Dollar Tree placemats. It does not matter what color you get. I chose the green ones, but as you can see, it usually comes in an assortment, but we're gonna end up painting it anyway, so you don't have to worry about it. Then you're going to need some Mod Podge. So the first thing we're gonna do is glue the center of the placemat into the center of the tray. That just helps you keep it steady so that it doesn't slip and slide around because most of it's going to be held down with the Mod Podge you're just going to use glue kind of to tack it down here and there so it doesn't slip then I'm going to lift half of it up to put the Mod Podge and I only go up to like almost the edge not all the way and I'm going to use the hot glue at the very edge just to make sure I can hold it down and of course I do that on both sides be careful right here to really press it down in the grooves because you definitely want this to take on like a shape of a basket it actually ends up looking deeper like the depth of it when we're all done with this craft so after that's dry i just flipped it upside down and we're going to do the same thing on the back except that i didn't put a little bit of hot glue to hold it in the center because i was just eyeing it this time because i'm going to be gluing the edges together if that makes sense so i wasn't so worried about it staying in the center because the other one is like a template and it's guiding me where I need to glue. I'm using folk art chalk paint in the color cottage white. It's a one coat paint. You can use my homemade chalk paint recipe too. I bought this when we first moved here so I just want to use it up and honestly it was 18 months ago and I still have more than half left. So I don't know if it is budget friendly anymore to make your own because all the prices have gone up. I don't know. Somebody, if you're still making homemade chalk paint, let me know if it's cheaper than buying it because this is definitely a little bit goes a long way. So I'm using a Dollar Tree plate and then the candle little, you get that in the candle section. It's like a candle holder to make like a bullseye or a dartboard. I needed the lines so I can stay in the lines. So I'm using antique parchment from Apple Barrel Paint and I added a little bit of the territorial beige and I mixed colors here because I kind of had a vision and I wanted a certain color. So unfortunately I can't tell you you know like a color to go out and buy but I can tell you the two that I mixed. So in the middle of painting as per usual, I decided those holes in there don't look good. I mean, maybe if you spray paint this, that would go away, but I can't stand the smell of spray paint. So I prefer the chalk paint. I can put it in my home right away without having to air it out for a couple weeks. So it's super easy to do. You just take the spackling, rub your finger over it, and the holes fill in beautifully. And then I thought, you know what? The edge still kind of gives away that it's not a you know cohesive piece. So I went ahead and put spackling on the edge of this, which leveled it up big time made it look really good when it was all done. So 
After I'm done spackling, I go ahead and I take the tutorial beige and I add a little bit of the antique parchment to it. So it's like the opposite of what I did the first time. The first time I used the antique parchment, added a little bit of territorial beige, and then I take the territorial beige and add a little bit of antique parchment and voila, this is what we end up with. And I think it's so beautiful. So when it's all dry, I turn it over and I do like a color melt using the elephant gray, just kind of into the brown. You know, I still wanted this to be finished because you might might see the back of it depending on how you style it. You'll see that at the end here, I actually put it against a ottoman puff so you can see how big it is. It's a really nice piece of decor. I give it a quick dry brush with some white paint to make it look more like a basket and we're all done. So for this next one, I found this really unique punch ladle at the Dollar General, and I just thought, you know, I'm going to make something with that. I saw something two years ago scrolling down on YouTube. I didn't watch the video, but I just saw the thumbnail, and I just always remembered it and thought, what a cute idea. So when I saw this, I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and make that DIY with this. I'm going to recreate it. So I took it outside again. I gave it the spray paint of primer because with plastic, yeah, I don't even think Waverly chalk paint, it's not going to stick. You really do need to spray paint it to get things to stick. But I went ahead and I did that. And now I'm just taking some watered down antique wax and I'm going to make this like a faux wooden spoon. That's what we're starting with. So I'm actually taking a tissue here. I'm not doing a baby wipe. This is like a piece of Kleenex folded up and I'm going to give it one coat to begin with. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come back and do a second coat because when you do that, it looks even more authentic like wood grain and you'll see that in just a minute. So here's my second coat and see how it's kind of grabbing the previous wax. You can kind of see it. It like bunches up. I, I don't know if you missed that. It was on the handle there. You can see how it does that. It kind of bunches up in areas. I don't know why wax does that, but I absolutely love the fact that it does that because it makes making faux wood so simple. So I even decided to go for some faux like wood knots. You know, I just twirled it just to see what would happen. And look, I think that's pretty decent. <laughs> I, mean, I just did it on a spur of a moment thing. So I was pretty pleased with that. So moving on, we are using a Dollar Tree Easter sign for this. And of course you can use any sign you want. And I'm going to take the hanger off and we're going to go ahead and give this one coat of that folklore chalk paint and linen. And someone asked me, how come you're not making homemade chalk paint anymore? When I first moved into my home, everything was packed. Everything was in storage. The first thing I set up was actually my studio and my kitchen and my bed. So my husband goes, oh, you know, it's too stressful. Just buy some. I bought that 18 months ago and it's still going. So if you don't feel up to making homemade chalk paint, I will say that it is, you can even add a little bit of water. I mean, a little bit goes a long way and I just get mine on Amazon and it's very affordable, but it's still going. So I'm going to go ahead and use it up. And I guess when I run out, I will decide, you know, I'm going to have to do all the math and decide whether or not it's budget friendly to keep using, you know, homemade chalk paint because prices are going up and things are changing and it might not be worth it anymore. I'll have to do the math and I will let you know. So this is some paper I got from Amazon. It was just like under the category of antique music paper. And I thought this was so pretty. And we're just going to glue this wooden spoon or faux wooden spoon on top of the paper and the sign. I used a furniture marker from the Dollar Tree to distress the edge of this. It's in the color walnut. However, in hindsight, I would rather have it distressed with like the wax. So I'm probably going to paint that and go over it again. But in this video, you'll see it with the marker. And then I also take some antiquing wax and go around the paper just to soften the edges. And I do tap those little holes at the top with a little bit of antique wax too, anywhere where there's an edge. And then I hang 
the twine that well it wasn't the dollar tree twine it's my own twine and i stick a bird nest in it this is what i saw and this is what i thought was so cute and this is actually something that you could change out with the seasons if you use like a ticking stripe material on the sign you could fill that little spoon full of like berries and pine and little deers or something during Christmas. I mean, you literally could change this with the seasons, but I just thought it was such a unique, cute idea. It's definitely like a perfect kitchen decor piece and we're all done. You're still with me thank you so much and if you're enjoying this video don't forget to leave a comment or give me a thumbs up i really do appreciate it and i love reading your comments honestly that's the best part of youtube so this is a dollar general bowl right here there's two of them it was that set of four that i used in the first diy i filled it with some gems and i use e6000 hot glue to hold this together and i put the gems in there for weight but I didn't think about it. It's actually quite noisy. So I wish I had gone out now. I just gotten a big rock. <laughs> so if you do this, get a big rock and glue it down. Unless you don't mind it sounding like a big baby rattle when you move it. I mean, I'm not going to be moving it around. So it's not that big of a deal. But still, learn, always wiser in hindsight when you're doing DIYs. And then we're using the two big bowls from the Dollar Tree. So I glue this together. Clean it up on the edge because that's really important. You'll see it if you don't. And I'm going to go ahead and use the same exact technique with the E6000, a little bit of hot glue on low heat to glue the rest of it together. Took it outside, it gave it one coat of this flat white primer. Again, bonds to plastic. And then I had purchased some of this. I've seen other people use it. It's supposed to be like a textured stone finish. And I had to do three coats and it was still kind of see-through and it didn't even finish it, I'm pointing out. I wasn't impressed. I couldn't even do the inside as you could see. So I wasn't impressed, but this time we're gonna go ahead and make this it's going to look superior over that original spray paint version anyway, so it doesn't matter. But what the spray paint did do is it has like little texture and like little tiny mini mini pebbles or something. So I, ca I got to skip the baking soda trick. So if you don't have that spray paint, just do what we did with the aged vessel with the baking soda and that will work just fine. You can also stir your paint with spackling and get a similar effect. It's just not as cost effective. So if you want to do it that way, you could. But... I'm going to go ahead and do another aged vessel type look, except this isn't really the shape of an aged vessel. So this will be more like, it reminded me kind of like of a plant pot or a pillar type thing. I still wanted it to look aged though. So we're just working with some different colors than we did in the first one. I did not use the dabbler sponge on this, or maybe I did and I switched back and forth. And that's definitely something when you do these kind of projects, you definitely have to switch around and play around and see which one works best for you. That's what I felt like worked best at the time. So this is just my first coat and it's just with the white paint. You definitely could stop there. I mean, this wasn't a bad look, but I turned it around and decided that I didn't like where you could see the two plastic bowls joining together. I decided to go ahead and fill that in with some spackling just to make it more cohesive, which ends up being a great decision. So with this one, you're gonna see me use more gray colors. I wanted this one to look a little bit more, maybe like, concrete or cement just for something different so if you're curious what i ended up using this for i think i'm not positive yet but as of right now as i'm speaking to you i think this would make a really pretty toilet roll holder in the bathroom and i have a great sense of humor too but you know how there's that joke about sitting on the throne and i just thought this looked very throne like it's kind of like the perfect holder you would expect a king have holding his toilet paper so <laughs> that's where it is right now it might change but again with this project 
you dab, you smear, and with these kind of projects, you are done when you're happy with the look. That's how they work. So I try to give as much information as I can during the tutorial, but it really is by eye. Just have fun. It's your own personal taste and make sure you seal it. I will say that. So in one of my shopping videos from Dollar General last summer, I found this bowl here and I was talking about in this video how I made this bowl and it was supposed to look like hammered copper and how easy you could probably do that with this one. So rather than just say that would probably work, I decided to try it out for myself. So I'm using the bottom of a tape roll for the bottom of this bowl. You could use like a big mayonnaise lid, anything like that, just so it elevates it a little bit. And of course I'm using the E6000 to make sure everything sticks. And then after it's glued, we're gonna take it outside and spray it down with some of the copper spray paint and see the results. And I would really love feedback about this if you guys think that it does look just as nice or close enough, I guess, to like a hammered copper. Let me know what you think. Oh my gosh, I had to include this DIY in this video, you guys. I was looking at anthropology photos and pottery barn photos a few years back, and this was a great, fantastic hit with the viewers. You guys loved this. Well, I don't know, for those of you that are new, this will be a nice surprise, but I just grabbed a bunch of Dollar Tree plastic. These little cauldrons come out in St. Patrick's Day, you know, decor in the Dollar Tree, that's where you'll find them. Then I grabbed a tape roll, some cans. I mean, I was grabbing every shape you can think of. So of course, I start off with grabbing some rocks this time from outside. These are actually from the seaside because I used to live by the ocean. And I grabbed some stones, glue them down for weight because you definitely have to weigh these down. And by the way, they are still going strong three years later. These completely held together. I'm using super glue gel and I'm gluing it around the edge. And you'll just have to watch what I do here. It's self-explanatory, but I just start to try and copy what I saw in those photos. It was lots of fun. Okay, that was the first one that we did. And then I'm moving on to the second one and I'm letting you know that if you don't have an extra tape roll, the Dollar Tree sells these little cylinder shapes and you can buy that and cut it if you want. But I'm just taking two of my little, I don't know what those were called, but to me they're dessert cups, but they don't call them that. They call them something weird and you'll, you'll see it at the beginning when I show the package. But glue it down on top of the tape roll, just like that, and then we're gonna go from there. We're moving on to these little leprechaun cauldrons and of course I'm removing the handles and I do sand down like the design on the side but you really don't have to because honestly those different vases in those photos were so abstract that you definitely could have a design on the side and it would just look like it was part of the vase in my opinion you like really didn't have to do that but I did. So I just start gluing these on top of each other and this is actually the baking soda trick again. I used it three years ago and this time I am using my homemade chalk paint and I also had some leftover sand that I had from a long time ago and I thought, you know what, why not just throw it in there, give it extra texture. Didn't make a big difference though. You can absolutely get the texture that you're after using just baking soda as I showed you in the first DIY, so no worries. And baking soda is so cheap. But then I just start painting these, that's it. So this is the end result. The one with the little cauldrons wasn't really my style. I would skip those, but the other ones I thought came up absolutely beautiful. So I'm showing you what I used each time. And I'm also gonna put up some examples where you can get it from right there. So if you buy that kind of food, 
keep that kind of food or you can use any can in any shape you want but this is you know how I got it if you want to recreate it and this is the end result and it's beautiful So if you checked out my summer solar hack video, I used this lampshade right here. This was a great lamp, especially if you're into modern decor, but I thought, you know what? There's another way that you can use this plastic piece right here. You just grab some wooden beads in any size that you want, glue them on the bottom, and then take it outside, give it some spray paint, and you end up with a super high-end looking modern decor vase. This next one we are going to use my favorite method of transfer i love the tissue paper method i think it's better than vinyl i've spoken about this in previous videos so many of you ask me can you please show me from beginning to end how you do that so this time i'm going to do that because i usually just explain it i also have a free printable for you with this diy at the end as well but i just take regular old tissue paper so i am using hallmark but i have used cheap brands before i don't know why i got hallmark Maybe it was on sale or I'm not sure. And you take masking tape or painting tape. This is cardstock and you tape it onto that. And you basically, the goal here is to try and tape it as tightly as you can. So you'll see where I put the tape down here and I give it a little gentle tug just to pull it over. And I'm gonna show you when I lift it, the kind of tightness you're looking for. Cause you can't get it totally tight or you'll tear the tissue paper. You just do the best you can, but that's more or less what it should look like. Next, you're going to go to your printer and just put your paper in however it needs to be for it to print on the front side of it. Obviously, I know that I need to do it this way. And by the way, see those three little cartridges? There's three of them and each compartment holds almost three ounces of ink. Yes, I love my printer. It's down below in my description box. If you are interested, it prints 7,000 copies and all of those ink, the liquid, like 20 something dollars or 30 to, that's it when you get the whole set it is so cheap to print now so I'm very excited and someone asked me how are, you know are you happy does that print good you saw how that prints so next you're going to cut your imagery out I also showed this in a Christmas video how you know amazing it blends into you can use dry brushing techniques if you want to as well to you know make it hide it a little bit more but it pretty much disappears. I mean, it's as good as you're gonna get, unless you wanna paint something like that. I mean, I can't paint that. So we're using the tissue paper, and you really can't print that with a Cricut either, which is why I never bothered getting a Cricut, because Cricut is really vinyl. I mean, you're just putting like a big sticker, like the stickers you get from Dollar Tree, onto your craft, and that's not a horrible thing. But I mean, definitely, if you're looking at it in the light, if the light's shining the right way, you can see that it's stickers on your project which I you know get you know with tissue paper you look at it in the right kind of light and it's hard to tell you have to go really close like you have to get right up to it and most people aren't going to do that so it just looks like a painted on or printed on image which is why I favor this so I'm using antique wax and I'm just going around the edge here just to make the edge pop a little bit and this is the same tray from Dollar Tree I did not bother including the tutorial because it's the same exact thing but just another idea for you so I will leave that printable as well down below but this is a great winter DIY I absolutely love this one another crowd pleaser were these three black candles that I made using Dollar Tree plastic they're on trend still I still see these selling all the time and 
I just wanted to see if I could make some. So I took some of the Dollar Tree little, I call them shot glasses, but that's not actually what they're called. And some of the skewer sticks, you can use the large skewer sticks from Dollar Tree or you can get some dowels. And then some of these little mini wavy plates, I guess. And I'm just cutting down my dowels so that they'll fit. So on the bottom of these cups to make them sturdier, I used a cork and I just ended up cutting the cork, drilling a hole, well, I glue them down first and then I drill a hole at the bottom of them so that my dowel will fit in there a little bit better. Just using a fine tipped Sharpie to make my mark in the middle of these little plastic things right there. Just I just trace the dowel shape. But what the trick is here is you melt it with a glue gun. You're gonna melt through this plastic. But you wanna go, and I did, by the way, have to do two over because I made the hole too big. It's really important to go slow and keep testing your dowel because what happens is the plastic is still kind of liquidy, almost like a hot glue. And so if you can shove your dowel down there while it's liquidy, then it hardens up and it helps squeeze your dowel into place and obviously makes the whole entire thing more sturdy. So that's what I did to get these to stand up really well. that's what they look like when they're all done. I take them outside and I spray them down with this flat protective enamel. That's the one I use. But I also end up having to glue these little gems down from the Dollar Tree. You could use rocks, anything. You just need some kind of weight at the bottom of them because they're definitely top heavy. But once you glue the weight down, it works like a charm and they came up so beautiful. next one is more of an idea than a DIY but it's just such a great thing to do with these trays when you find them at the Dollar Tree I just took this tray and it would work for any season by the way you can fill it with seasonal decor but I literally just took this tray painted it with some white chalk paint filled it with some pine and some candles I used the Dollar Tree cheap pine at the bottom just to give it some more bulk and then I put the more expensive pine on top and voila you have a beautiful winter decor piece. This was so simple. And to be honest, you guys, this is the one where when people walked in, cause it was on my coffee table, I stage it on a crate at the end. So I, I want the fireplace behind it, but it actually landed on the coffee table with candles burning every night at Christmas time. We would just put little tea lights in there. I had filled the candle holders up with salt and it just came up beautiful. This was the one where people walk in and go, oh, that's so pretty, what is, did you make that? Yep, so simple, so stunning. For this next project, I use a Dollar Tree tray, but that's actually the Dollar General. You can still get these for a dollar. So I just wanna let you know, if you live by a Dollar General, go check it out over there. So this was just such a great technique to turn this cheap plastic into a faux wood. I spray painted it with some black paint. Then I do some dry brushing. And the important thing here when I was doing this photo is I talk about the different layers of paint. Because if you just do one, sometimes you don't get wood that looks, you know, it's missing like the depth, I guess. And so you don't have the realism, like right there. If I just left it right there, you totally can tell that's not wood. You can see the little circles on the bottom that, you know, give it away that it's plastic. So we start off with the, you know, it was a black primer, by the way. You do have to use some kind of primer, even if it's a spray paint mixed with primer, you have to have something that definitely will stick to your plastic. You could also, if you don't have paint, you can use a clear spray varnish, like a spray paint varnish, and spray your plastic with that. And I have heard that will also hold on like acrylic paint and things like that. If you do that, that is a great hack. So then I take some territorial beige and burnt umber and we're basically working with those three colors. I just start dipping my brush in some 
and I don't rinse my brush off. I dip it in territorial beige, then I dip it in a little burnt umber, and I just keep mixing, blending, mixing, blending, and at the end, because there's so much contrast and depth and honestly paint, I mean, there's several layers of paint on here, and I smear it a little bit with a Kleenex where I want it to be smeared, push my brush down, Again, project that you keep working on till you get it where it is but I do recommend at least four colors when you're doing if you're serious about making something look like faux wood see how I'm taking the tissue now and I'm wiping what I did so it's kind of wet kind of it's already dry in places and dry brushing someone asked me that is putting very very little paint on your brush you dip your brush and paint and you basically use a tissue to tap it mostly off so there's hardly anything on there so this is sped up but this did take some time but the results are really really beautiful i show you the grain up close so you can actually see how it looks like faux wood grain like someone could walk up close to this and they would never know it's not wood and that's it hope this video showed you how you can take some of the cheapest, nastiest stuff and turn it into totally beautiful high-end home decor. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Either way, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. I really love you guys. And until the next video, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.